we give that thanks to God. You know, when I came to Canada the first time, there was something that uh, I don't know whether you talk with Canadians about Thanksgiving weekend. So they invited us for dinner in uh, in the house of the uh, lady called our Canadian friend. And I think that's what they do. International students go to different country and country they call it Ali. They call them your Canadian friends. So this is our Canadian friend, and we we went to their house. And I came from Nigeria with all my, you know, very conservative. <laughs> so we you know, mindset, and they, we went, and I, and I think, I, I would never leave that conservative mindset. So, I do what they were saying. <laughs> I, so we went, we were at the table, trying to eat turkey. Oh, man, we didn't have turkey in the house today. We even forgot that it's Thanksgiving, that there's turkey. <laughs> I thought we had turkey to cook. Well, just to let you know, Hannah went to Quebec, Montreal, uh, very sad thing, but you know what? In all this, is more than conquerors. Our very good friend, Hannah's very good friend, actually, from back from school, we, they, we all, they all did the university together. They started their first year, lived together. She died last two weeks. You know, so they live in Montreal, so that's what she, the funeral was last weekend. So she was, she's in Montreal, that's why she's not in church today. Yeah, we, we are more than conquerors. You know, I, I've had a, quite a bit of uh, emotional thing to deal with. You know, we, this family, we've known this family for a long time. I guess we all grew up. You know, people, you started growing up when you were like 17. You know, I used to tell my children that I did not just become old. There was a time I was 17, actually. <laughs> you know, there was a time I was 14. There was even a time I was like two. <laughs> you know, so we we knew this family from we at least I know the husband from, from when we were in first year. I think we all get to invest in the same year, you know. So we knew each other from that age, uh, seventeen, eighteen, and so on. So the the lady died on the nineteenth. That's very sad thing to deal with. But you know, one thing that I I'm really grateful to God for her, her life is that. Uh, since uh, March, when the, she was diagnosed with cancer, uh, we've had consistently prayed with them for the next, you know, twice a week for that until, until the day. Actually, she died on a Tuesday. We prayed last on Sunday. And, uh, you know, the beauty about her death, even though it's very sad, we, we expected a different outcome. But, you know, the Bible said the Lord has given him thanks. Praise God. Is that the night she died, the husband said, that's the least thing that can come to the mind of a person. You know, such a peaceful death. They finished and they, she was going upstairs to their room and the husband was like, um, do I come and help you? He said, don't come and help me or anything. I'm, I'm, I'm going to climb upstairs <laughs> to my room. You know, they just cracked all that joke and then she got back into the bed and, you know, did all the bathroom thing and then went to bed and then by morning she was gone. Praise God. Anyway, um, we don't have much time to share the word, but um, one thing I just want to remind us that from now on, we will be having a designated time to bless our offering. Uh, even though we don't uh, specifically call people to give offering, but I expect you as a child of God to know that you don't come to the house of God uh, empty. You know, so when you come, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's convenient to where you're preparing to come to church. Just give your offering. You know, the online giving these days have made it so easy to give to. So there's really no excuse. For you. you know, you just uh, wake up and pray and say, God, today I'm, this is my offering. And then when we come, we bless it. And then God will bless you. Praise God. So um, one thing I, uh, because we just have about five minutes to share whatever we want to share. I captioned this message is reaching the goal Reaching the goal, living godly. Reaching the goal, living godly. That's what I captioned this message. And um, I just want you to understand that the goal, God's goal, like I was explaining in the Bible study, is for us to be a particular kind of people. Everything that God did with mankind have always been to take for himself a people. 
people that he can call his own. The goal of God is to just grab people that he can call his own. That's his plan in creation. He created mankind and said that let us make them, you see the way God wants us to be like him. He said let us make man in what? In our own image. After our own likeness. I don't want to, we can, I don't, I don't, I'm not prepared to explain the two different image and likeness. But it just simply means, you know, similarity, oneness. Let's make him in our image after our likeness. So that just as I, we have dominion. So that I, God, the way I have dominion, the way I am in charge, the way I am the supreme spirit. You know, the Bible says that God is held in reverence in the, among the mighty. I don't know whether any of you have, how many of you have watched The Lord of the Rings? You have watched The Lord? You see, that movie, I watched it so many times, but each time it gives me an idea, you know, an understanding of the way God is. The Lord of the Rings. The Supreme Spirit. Somebody said, uh, when you pray sometimes, so <laughs> He was talking about, uh, you know, the way some of us understand God. He said, somebody said, you know what? God is just my father. I, I relate with him as a father. Sometimes I tell him, God, I'm mad, I'm mad at you. <laughs> and the man said, when he said that, I, I just said, you don't know God. <laughs> the way he, you know, the way he, and you know, this is a, sorry, don't misunderstand. This is a Canadian idea. I have never heard anybody before that said that I'm mad at God in my life. <laughs> or I'm angry with God. Have any of you had that back, back in Nigeria? We have a, that's nothing we that's not something we think we should be. I'm just mad at God. Please don't be mad at God. <laughs> Praise God. So the man said, God is a king spirit. You know the way you have spirits? You know, in the cadre of spiritual beings, you have spirits. You, have, you know, the Bible talks about principalities, power, spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. You see, this is the way, these are names that spirits are, have in hierarchies. And that's why the Bible talks about Jesus. Say that God gave him a name above every name. So in the hierarchy of spiritual beings, Jesus sits at the top of it. The Godhead, everything becomes subject to him. So the Bible said that because he made everything subject to Jesus, therefore, Jesus, he has also made Jesus subject to himself. Because he made everything subject to Jesus, Jesus becomes subject to him. Praise God. So the intent of God is to make us become at the hierarchy of creation. So he says so that you can have dominion. You see, many of us who have been Christians for a long time, we need to start asking ourselves, is how much dominion am I exercising as a person? Am I fulfilling divine agenda for my life? Am I really living the life that God created me to live? Not in terms of your behavior, but in terms of your authority and, and results. Praise God. It's not in terms of, because many times what keeps on confusing us is this whole idea of our thinking that our lifestyle is either making God happy or unhappy. The only reason our lifestyle makes God unhappy is because he loves us. Because he said, I know the thought I think towards you, thought of good and never of evil. To do what? They give you a future. Now, for those of us who are parents, when you see your children going you know, you know, with the, the eye of an adult, you can see that this child is the, the, the way you are going, you are not going to where, where I think where you, it will be well with you. Your life, your life is trying to, you are drilling. You know, your anger with the child is not really basically because he's hurting you. What is it? Your anger is a holy indignation that is born out of what? Love and concern. That is how God feels about us. So our God rejoices when our life reflects what he has intended for it to become because he knows that you are heading to somewhere. Praise God. He knows you are going to achieve 
the purpose, the glory. Because the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short. You are fallen short, but your life is taking you to where God knows you should be. So God is excited. Have you seen how God is happy about your behavior? That is what makes him happy. It's not really because where you be, you know, what can you really do to hurt God? God is perfect in every way. He is perfectly joyful, perfectly happy. Perfectly, everything is perfect. So the only thing that concerns him is that he is not, he is seeing that I'm not, I probably will not achieve the glory I had intended to achieve in this person. And he paid a very big price for it. You know that? The Bible said that you are bought with a price because what happened? Jesus gave his life for you. There's an investment in your life that God wants to see a result from. And when that result is unlikely to happen because of your choices, God is saddened. Our sister read that Isaiah chapter 5 this morning. See the way God prepares our life for, for, for success. Did you get that picture? He said he had planted a vineyard, cultivated it, manured it, made it everything, kind of put a hedge around it, and he went and got a choice seed. Not, 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 you know, not a bad, you know, in terms of agri agriculture, there are some seeds that have potential for maximum productivity. Who is in agriculture here? We don't have farmers. Where is Anne? Oh, she's downstairs. There are some seed. In fact, in agriculture, they have made effort to keep on bioengineering you know, plants so that they can have maximum productivity. So God said, I planted you, I broke the soil, cleared the stone, planted it with the finest vine. And he built a tower in the middle of it and hewed out the wine press there. And what is happening? He's doing what? I said, there's an expectation in my life. So the anger of God is a, you know, a dashed expectation for you. And that's why he will say, why will you perish, O house of Israel? So, it is expectation to yield a good grape, but he yielded worthless things. That's how God gets, that's what gets God. And uh, being a father, I understand it. You know, being a father has helped me to understand the way God feels. So when you are looking at your children and you are looking at the person, make it, you, have, you, this, you have this idea, these ideas in your head and you have made plans for it. You've invested into it. And you are still investing into it. And then you find that there is no deliberate you know, choice to make decisions and to walk in the way that we get to the goal. You are saddened. So he said, now, I don't want you to read the next thing God said, said because he said, now what I will tell you what I will do. <laughs> I will expose you. I will take off all the good things I put in you. And then you will be devoured. That is a long time in coming. Praise God. You get what I'm talking about? It's long time in coming. It doesn't come easy. It doesn't come quickly. Because God's steadfast love endures what? Forever. Another beauty you must appreciate in God is how patient he is. How patient. You know the reason why God is patient? Because, uh, you know, he ca you can, a little adjustment in your life can change your destiny forever. So God knows it. That I don't want to destroy him so quickly. The Bible says that God does this thing. You know what he does? You know, there was a parable Jesus gave to us. He said that uh, you know, this God comes to inspect his vine. This husband might come. So he said that this vine has been here many years. Every year I come, it does not bear fruit. Every year I come, it does not bear fruit. And he said to the, to the, to the landlord, the caretaker, cut this thing off. It's occupying space for nothing. You get that? And then by the caretaker, who is this caretaker? He said, Jesus. He said, let us allow it one more year. Give it time. I'm going to help. I'm going to, you know, put things around it. And then I will see whether it will be. If after one year it does not bear any fruit, then you are just fine to cut it off. 
You know, every year that your life, you have not devoted to serving God and to living in the precept that God has ordained for you and making the choices you should make, it is another year that is granted you. Are you getting what I'm talking about? It's another year of grace. But you know, who is, that? Who is saying that? Oh. Um, is this guy, is this um, the man that lost his wife calling me? Yeah. You know, he's, uh, I will call him back. So, it's another year of grace. And that's why the Bible says, don't let your sinful behavior dominate your life forever. Because you have opportunity from God every year for reassessment. I mean, if you uh, have a job where you are pressed for promotion, God always appraises us. So based on that, you know what St. Paul said? He said that when I became a Christian, I counted my life on earth and all the endowments I have and all the privileges I have as nothing because I'm setting my mind to achieve and attain the excellence to which God has called me. Then he enumerated all his advantage. He said, I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrews. I'm an intelligent man. I'm raised under Gamaria. I have a lot of advantage. He said, but all those things I have, I counted them as nothing in order that I might gain Christ. This should be our attitude of living our life. I want to gain him. I want to become what he had ordained for me to become. I don't want to keep on romancing with my, the past and, you know, elevating the past. You know, let me tell you. You know, no matter how much you think you are gifted and what you think you know, your wisdom is foolishness before God. So you better take God's wisdom. And we have this problem all the time. Each time we are thinking about how wise we are, <laughs> how gifted we are. You know, the Bible says that the wisdom of man in the sight of God is what? Foolishness. He said, and the strength of man is weakness before God. So therefore, God decided to choose the things that are nothing. So for you to become what God really intends for you to become, you need to learn to make yourself, count yourself as what? Nothing. Okay, time is gone. Praise God. So we just rise up and thank God for the all he's given to And I give God thanks for the weekend. I didn't tell you, finish telling you the story that I was telling, talking about uh, Thanksgiving. So Canadian will say that I am thankful for this. I am thankful for this. And I said to them, please, who are we thanking here? <laughs> who is this person we are thankful to? Is it to the air or is it to Canada? Is it to... I said, can we say we thank God? Bible say in all things, give him what? Thanks. Let's define this is the way that the world have almost like worship what, you know, the, crea the creature more than the creator. I am thankful for the good air. I am thankful for the good weather. Oh, Jesus. So I said, I said, to, I said to them, the woman never forgets his object now. <laughs> I said, let us thank. Who are we thanking? You are thankful for. To whom is this thankfulness going? I said, just, a thank, just being thankful. I said, you cannot just be thankful. The thanksgiving should be to God. Let's rise up and say, All the glory must be to the Lord only he is worthy of our praise no one on earth should give glory to himself all the glory must be, all the glory must be, all the glory must be to the Lord. Let's sing one more time. All the glory must be to the Lord only he is 
worthy of our praise. No one on earth should give glory to himself. All the glory must be. All the glory must be. The glory must be to the Lord. There's a song that says, For all you've done and all you're going to do, we give you thanks. And I just want to open your mouth and give God thanks for. Bible says, What manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Say it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. So can you thank God? He has called us to glory and to virtue. He said, I know the thought I think towards you. So God is ever thinking for you. His purpose for your life is beauty. Unlimited. Can we just be grateful, appreciating him for what he had designed for us? He is a faithful God. His love is from everlasting to everlasting. The Bible says, give thanks to the Lord for his good. For his mercies endures forever. His loving kindness is to all, to all generations. To them that fear him. Can you open your mouth and just bless God? Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship his holy name. Let's sing it again. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul. Yes, God. I worship your holy name. Yes, we worship your holy name. Lord, we worship your eye. Just permit me, I just want to sing one more song. Akamaram makam ga guru chineke mo. Uri maramakam gaitere chineke mo Kobaraya kamarama Kobaraya kamarama Tevere ye gumarama Bovaraya bomarama Akamarama akamra Akahamarama Eguhumarama kam getere chineke mo Urihimarama kanga bara chineke mo Bara yeguhumarama Gubara chuku eguhumarama Tevere ye gumarama, kubara ya kamarama, 
Kovaraya kamarama, kopara chuku akamarama, kopara chuku akamarama. Amen. Akamarama. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, we just want to say you are so good. And we truly appreciate you. You are our shield. You are our stronghold. You are the, our light in darkness. You are our mighty deliverer. You are our lover. We say to you, may all the praise be. May our life continually be a stream of praise to your name. Thank you again for this day. For all you've done. Father, we give you thanks. For all you are wanting to do, we also give you thanks. For your word said that I have not seen and ear have not heard what you prepare for them that love you. And Father, we want to say thank you. For we can know you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ever think or ask. Let that become our experience according to your faithfulness. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. Our sister, just come on. Let's just pray for, for you. And the, the Lord, we, we establish you and give you peace in the land. Amen. Can we just stretch our hand and pray for our sister? Come over here. Don't, don't need to need that. God bless you. Just stretch your hand and ask God to show her favor. To comfort her on every side. To strengthen her with the strength that only God can provide. To surround her life with mercy and goodness. Father, may she lack not never your comfort in this land. May she never lack your presence. Father, she has come in faith. Believing you. She will not be disappointed. We worship you, Tana God. For in Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> Can we share the grace in fellowship? Sorry, we want to sing our, our, our anthem. Praise God. So may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may the love of God that passes all knowledge, and the grace of God that endure from generation to generation, rest with you and go with you. Now and always. Thank you, Father. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. I worship you and adore you for your faithfulness. Amen. Praise the Lord. You see that Michael is uh, beginning to put style to this thing. <laughs> God bless you. Okay, um, just uh, before we leave, uh, remember our, you know, I've been musing and thinking about our beginning to have our Wednesday prayer meeting in person in church. Um, I'm going to send out a flyer, a feeder about that. And I just want people to respond and know whether you is something that we can do. I know it's convenient to do it at home, but I think we should start thinking about meeting even if it's once a month to pray on our midweek prayer in church. Praise God. God bless you. Remember the midweek prayer. Thank you.